worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ahad died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Herosheth ha Goem. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prof prophetess, wife of Labadoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Ebenoam, from Kadesh and Naphtali, and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go take possession of Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kashan with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness. For that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. For those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Jesus said, for it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you have handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Will our children and teachers please come forward? Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. Holy God, we ask, O oh Lord, that our children and teachers uh, may truly receive all the grace and glory from our Lord Jesus Christ that they can ever imagine. And we ask, O oh Lord, all this in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And go. Go with wisdom. Yeah. All right. Come on. Tanner, turn around. Tanner, turn around. All right, good. Fantastic. All right. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
So this morning, um, before the 8 o'clock service, Michael Jordan, uh, not Michael Jordan, the basketball player, but our Michael Jordan, uh, came and he knocked on my door and he said, Father Robert, um, I'm, uh, uh, I, I know this is a tall task for you to figure out how to come to terms with the last thing that Jesus said about from those who have nothing, uh, uh, even more shall be taken. And I said, I know this is a hard task, uh, but I, I, I think I can manage this. Okay. And then um, Mac um, Steele, who um, uh, is Mac and Mary Steele, comes in. And he's a, he's a Georgia honk. He went to Georgia. And, and so he said, Father Robert, are you going to be preaching about the Georgia-Tennessee game? And which I said to him, uh, from, for, those who have, uh, for those who have much, uh, more will be given to them. And for those who have nothing, even more will be taken from them. And that's me, a Tennessee fan. So, um, so having said that, um, our gospel reading is another one of these parables in chapter 25. And, and when you get to the punchline... If you don't have the full context, the punchline sounds kind of crazy, kind of weird. Like, why is Jesus saying this? This doesn't sound anything like Jesus. In fact, as Caroline uh, Caroline said um, at Bible study, she said, this doesn't sound like anything Jesus has said up until this point in time because of the Beatitudes and other things. And I said, you're right. Without context, what he says here is really complicated and in some ways impenetrable. Why is he telling, why is he saying for those that have nothing more will be taken away? That's not even possible if they have nothing, right? So we got to figure out what Jesus is talking about here. And if you remember last time that I was uh, uh, was talking, uh, last week it was uh, chapter 25, verse 1 through 13, right before this, And remember that the context is that the disciples and Jesus, and that's all that's there, just the disciples and Jesus, are up at the top of the Mount of Olives. And this is after they have come down from the temple in the center of Jerusalem, and then they go up to the Mount of Olives, and from there, just the 12 disciples and Jesus go up there, and the disciples want to know about when when the temple is going to be destroyed. They want to know about the end of the end of times, the end of the age, and they want to know about his second coming, right? That's what they want to know. Oh my goodness, the temple is going to be knocked down. Does this mean that it's the end of the age? And is that when you're coming back, Jesus? And you have to remember that in many ways, the disciples are still very much in the mindset of who they were as Jews. They're more like the Pharisees than they are like Jesus, right? So they're still kind of, they're still being formed in some ways, and Jesus is trying to get them to leave behind some of the, the old stuff, which is really, in some ways, um, shaped by fear, right, and anxiety, right? So he wants them to stop being formed by the kind of the fear and anxiety and worry of the Pharisees and have them really receive with, with faith and love and joy his teaching. But it's hard, right, because they've been, they've been Second Temple uh, uh, Jewish fishermen and bankers and whatnot for a long time. And he wants them, in some ways, to be like him, not like the Pharisees, right? But fear, fear is a strong thing, and it's hard to get rid of, right? So Jesus is up there, and he said, look, our reading begins, and it says, Jesus said, it is as if, and that first it when you see that, that is the kingdom of heaven. And if you, if you remember, that's what he was saying at the beginning of last, of last week, at the beginning of chapter 25. All of, these, all of these parables that he's got going are about the kingdom of heaven. It is as if. The kingdom of heaven is as if, right? Now, he gives us this parable, which we all know as the parable of the talents, or the three servants and the talents, right? And it is a really difficult parable because it doesn't really tell me much about what the kingdom of heaven looks like. Like on the surface, this just seems very transactional. Jesus, why are you talking about three guys receiving a whole bunch of silver bars? Like what, what's that? What, what, what does that have to do with the kingdom of heaven? Right now, 
We have to understand something. All throughout the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is fulfilling different people's missions, right? So as I said to to people at the Bible study earlier, name me some people who Jesus is fulfilling their mission. And they were really good at this. They got all of them, right? They said, well, Jesus is the second Adam, right? Jesus is fulfilling the work of Abraham and the promises that God gives to Abraham. Jesus is like um, like the patriarchs. Jesus is like... uh, uh, Moses. Jesus is like the prophets, especially Elijah. And I said, well, that's fantastic. You're absolutely right. And if you don't know what a parable, which parable is speaking to what job Jesus is doing, who he's fulfilling the work of, it becomes very difficult to understand what Jesus is doing. So in our gospel reading today, you have to understand that Jesus is doing the work of of the second Adam, right? He is the second Adam. So what is he doing? He's overcoming what happened with the first Adam, right? And he's overcoming the effects of the original sin of eating the uh, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? So he's overcoming those effects. And so we have to understand a little bit about that story in the Garden of Eden. And if you remember correctly, in that story, um, Adam and Eve eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and right away, they, uh, they recognize they are naked, i.e., they're vulnerable. They hide from God under, uh, uh, under a bush, and they are basically afraid of God and afraid of their vulnerability. Not only do they gain the knowledge of good and evil, they gain they gain mortality and fear and vulnerability. And Jesus has come in some ways as the second Adam to overcome the effects of that original sin. And so, um, after that, right, we, we see all the effects of the original sin, and guess what? There were operational at Jesus' time, and they're still operational today, right? We still have fear and anxiety and worry and sin, right? Now, if we also remember when God created humans, he created them and he gave them a job. He said, all of this creation, you are the stewards of all of this. I give you all of this. I entrust you with my good creation. I want you to be in charge. I'm giving you oversight of all I have created. Right? So that's the lens, really, of the story of, 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 from third, the third chapter of Genesis, that, that they've been given this job, they're supposed to be stewards of it, but they, they in some ways, aren't good stewards, and they, they, um, they, they sin, and they turn away from God, and they have fear, shame, vulnerability, and mortality. And in our reading today, you need to have that in the background of what Jesus is trying to overcome here. So our reading begins with, um, with a guy, and he's going on a long journey. And, and the word for journey is, this is the only place in the New Testament this word is used, uh, apodemos, right? Apodemos means to go away from the people. It doesn't just mean journey like uh, ap- 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 would be. It means to go away from the people. So he's... So, He's going away from these people. And he goes, but before he goes, he says, guess what? I'm going to give to one of my slaves, I'm going to give five talents. To the other one of my slaves, I'm going to give two talents. And to the other one of my slaves, I'm going to give one talent. And he goes away. Now, if you notice in the story, he does not tell them what to do with the talents that he's given. Now, a talent is just a bar of precious metal. It could be could be gold, could be platinum, could be silver. But in our story today, we know it's silver because he uses the word argirion, which is the word for silver. And, uh, but in your, in your text, it says money instead. I don't know why. But anyway, it's these big bars of silver, right? And he gives, he gives the first one five bars of silver. Now, Kareen, would you love five heavy bars of silver? Yeah. Yes, she would love five heavy bars of silver. Hoppy, would you love two heavy bars of, of silver? Yes. 
so long as I would carry them to your car, right? <laughs> uh, okay. And, and one for you? Oh, well, I'll call Chris, all right? He'll put them in the back of his Porsche, okay? All right. So now, so you have to understand, these bars of silver that he's giving to people are so much more than anybody would ever make in any life as a slave, right? We, we talked about a, a denarii. A denarii was, was a person's wage for one month. Well, a bar of, an enormous heavy bar of silver would be more than a slave would ever see in, in a slave's whole life. Not only one lifetime, but ten lifetimes, right? Then he gives, he gives one of these slaves five heavy bars. And on your bars of silver, I'd stamp them with the Pittsburgh Steelers on them, right, Corrine? Right. Property of Kareen, Pittsburgh Steelers, right? Okay, so now, so now, the money that's given, these, these talents, is so far beyond what anybody can ever imagine, right? It's beyond the wildest dreams. Now, keep your mind on that. The, the, the gift that they've been given or the property they've been given is beyond anybody's imagination of what could be given to a slave. All right, now... The first guy who had five, he went out and, and, and he started investing his money. In the, in the first, in the first uh, uh, service at 8 o'clock, I said that, that, that he was investing it with Mary Steele's steeple necklace out, outfit. But here at the 10.30, the slave was, was using uh, Matt Aldridge's uh, um, Edward Jones shingle up in, uh, in Hendersonville, right? And, and it would be like Matt having somebody come and say, I want to invest $500 million with you. Do you think you can handle this, Matt? Yeah, Matt says, yeah, I know exactly what to do. I'm building a wing at my house with, with some of that, right? Okay, now, now so, so he's, he goes and he makes five more. And, and the second guy with two talents, he does the same thing. And he makes two, two more talents. But the first guy, the, fir the, the, the third guy says, you know what? I know my master's a wicked and evil man. I'm afraid of the consequences of what he's doing. I'm just going to hide this talent in the ground. I'm going to dig a deep hole, and I'm going to bury this silver talent in the ground so that I don't lose it, so, so the man doesn't come back and punish me or throw me in jail or do something horrible to me, right? So the, the guy comes back from his journey, and, and he, he says, okay, I want an accounting uh, from my three slaves of what they did with this, this money, right? And the first slave says, well, funny you should ask. I went, I went, to, I, I went to, um, uh, to Matt Aldridge's uh, Edward Jones, and he got me in some go-go offshore stocks. Uh, it was something about Indian telecom. And, um, and so he got me, and I, I, here's, not only here are your five talents, but here are five more talents, right? Because I was such a good investor of your money, right? And the second says, well, you know, I only had two, but I followed the first guy there, and, I, I, and, and Matt made me two more, two more talents, right? So here's, here's two of your talents, here's two more. Now, now that's great, and what, what, what the, what the uh, master says is he says, he says, good, ooh or ev, he says, good, um, and he says, good and faithful servant, right? That's what it says in the good, good and faithful servant. It doesn't say trustworthy, all right? It says faithful, right? It says faithful, piste, right? Good and faithful servant. He says that to both the first, the first servant and the second servant. Now, the the third guy comes up and he says, well, you know what? I had a different strategy. I don't, I don't know who this Matt Aldridge is, and I've never heard of, of, of Edward Jones or Steeple Nicholas or the market, right? I'm just a slave in first century Jerusalem. What would I know? All I know is how to dig holes in the ground, and I know that you're a wicked and evil man and that you reap where you did not sow and that, that you, you take from what you did not scatter. I know who you are. You're an evil man. So here's your one talent back. I'm just giving you back what you gave me. And the master says, oh, you knew I was a wicked and evil master, didn't you? Well, if you knew that I was a wicked and evil master, 
You knew that I would come for more than just this one talent I gave you. You should have taken it to the bank. You should have invested it. You should have at least gotten me 15% in a good year with that one talent. And then he says, you wicked and lazy, you wicked and lazy slave. And then he says, take what he has and give it to the others and throw them out into the darkness. Now, when you hear this, you think to yourself, boy, this is an awful story. Like, what, what is this about, right? Like, who wants to get thrown out in the, into, the, in the, into the, uh, to the darkness where there's gnashing of teeth and wailing? What, what, what's this about? And then, not only that, but he says, from those, for, uh, uh, those who have uh, much, more will be given to them, and from those who have nothing, everything will be taken from them. And then you think to yourself, this is a horrible understanding of God's salvation. This is awful. Right, it is. Because on the surface, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So now we have to understand what the heck is going on. Now remember, as I said, Jesus, as he's telling the story, is telling him a story, telling them a parable about the kingdom of heaven and how he, as the second Adam, will overcome death and sin and fear and worry and separation from God, right? So what he's telling them is this. If you keep, if you keep behaving like the Pharisees, bound up with fear and worry, if you keep up that behavior and you, and you take God's stuff and you bury it in the ground, and now by stuff I mean grace and love and faith and hope and all of that stuff, if you take what God wants to give you and you bury it in the hole and you hide it, much like Adam and Eve hid under a bush because they were afraid of God, if you take what God has given you out of fear and you do nothing with it, there'll be no outcome. There will be no abundance. You see, if you live in fear and you receive what God has given you in fear and anxiety, what you'll have at the end is more fear and anxiety and worry and death and separation from God. But, he says, we came to Jerusalem so that I could die on a cross. Now, to many of you, that would sound like the worst thing possible. And it did sound like that to Peter and uh, to, uh, uh, to Judas and many of the other disciples. But he says, I didn't come to die in fear. I didn't come to worry about dying. I'm not anxious about that. I came so that I might do the work of God in grace and love without fear so that you might have as much faith as you possibly can and see what I'm about. Now, what he says is, in other words, those people who receive God's grace and love with openness, if you receive that with grace and openness, and, and you return it back to God in faith, and you return it, you give it out to others in love, you will have so much abundance that it'll just keep coming back to you. That's not talking about silver and gold. And, 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 and platinum, because if he were, I'd be the richest man on the planet. But I'm not. And it's okay. What God is talking about is what are you doing with what God gives you? And he says this, the kingdom of heaven looks like this. It looks like the Garden of Eden before before Adam and Eve sinned, which is they were in right relationship to God. They were worshiping God. God was giving them grace and they were giving him love. He gave them creation and life and they gave him stewardship. 
The good news isn't about wailing and gnashing of teeth out in the darkness. What Jesus is telling his disciples and us here today is, what do you want? Do you want the abundance of God's grace? If so, you're going to have to stop acting like everybody else out in the world, especially those Pharisees over there. You're going to have to start acting like me. I know I'm dying. It's probably the worst possible death possible. But from that place, I'm going to love and forgive and heal. The good news isn't that the world is perfect right now. Otherwise, the Steelers would be 11 and 0, right? The Bears would be 11 and 0, and that would be the greatest miracle of all time. <laughs> the good news is that Jesus is basically saying to everybody, "Look, the kingdom of heaven is right in front of you, but you got to see it correctly. You got to open your eyes." Do you want to live in faith and love and joy and hope? Or do you want to live in fear and anxiety and worry and shame? What do you want? Good news and the kingdom of heaven is right here for your taking. What would you like? Now we know, we know that the disciples are going to struggle with this. Judas will, will betray him. Peter will deny him three times. Thomas will want to see the wounds on Jesus' hands and side. They will all struggle with fear and doubt and worry and shame. But the good news is that Jesus will not only die for our sins, but rise so that we might have new life. We don't have to choose to hide under a bush and be ashamed. We get to choose new life, new life in Jesus Christ, where the abundance of God's gifts of grace and love never end. We get to be transformed into the people that God originally created us to be, people in right relationship with God. And Jesus came to restore that relationship, and he offers it to each one of us. Amen. We believe in one, one God, God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will, will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, and our priests, Molly, Robert, and Randy, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town of Tryon, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirmed, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Rebecca, Kathy, Sue, Judy, Pamela, Roger, Margie, Shirley, Jack, Edith, Bob, John, Ed, Meg, Joe, Rick, Jean, Jean, Patsy, Ben, John, Kathy, Muriel, Boyd, our armed services and their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Forgive us and save us from the fire of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have most need of your mercy. Lord, have mercy. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
That's right. But if I, I say Good morning. Good morning. I am Sam Dora, a member of the Vestry here, and on behalf of the Vestry, I'd like to welcome everyone here today, especially if you are visiting us uh, for, a, for a second or third time or for the first time, uh, we want to welcome you. Uh, if you take a look, if you're visiting and you take a look in the, the back of the pew in front of you there, there's a little card that you can fill out and put it in the uh, offering plate, and it's got a little gold cross that if you'll take that off and put it on your lapel, We'll be able to recognize you as a visitor and greet you uh, individually. And also, you fill this out, put it in a plate, you'll get a nice card from this man right here. So uh, please take a look in your bulletin at the announcements. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, there's, there's a group of announcements in here, but there's also something I really like is this week at a glance that you can go and take a look and see what's going on this week you know, without a lot of description, but with what's going on, and, and you can take a quick look at that. Um, after the service, we're having coffee hour down in the parish hall, just follow the crowds down. Um, I think we got a nice spread today with some sweet and savory, so uh, please come and enjoy. Thank you. Hey, good morning. Um, a little something special this morning. When we sing our anthem while the offertory is being taken, the congregation is invited to join us for the last verse, and I'm going to attempt to signal you when, when that is, but if you would open your hymnal to hymn 688 and sing along with us to the last verse to A Mighty Fortress, we would appreciate that. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Peter Franklin. I serve Holy Cross as treasurer and stewardship chair. Um, two pieces of really good news for you. Um, the first is that the results of this year's uh, stewardship campaign have been very strong. Um, you have given abundantly and we are very grateful for that. The second piece of good news is the campaign communication ends next Sunday on Christ the King Sunday so that we can focus on the holy season of Advent and uh, you can no longer hear from me. So that's the other piece of good news. Um, to date, Father Robert and I have written 115 thank you cards um, and we would love to end the campaign with 140 pledges. And you say, what's up with 140? Next year will be Holy Cross's 140th birthday and so we would love to celebrate that by, um, by having 140 pledges. So I think you can write 24 more, 25 more cards. I can write 100 more. Okay. <laughs> that is the challenge, 100 more pledges. But thank you, and um, if you have any questions, please let me know. There are pledge cards out on the table in the foyer, and um, you can certainly uh, talk to me or Father Robert if you Peter, have any questions. Peter, before you go, I, want, I just want to say one thing. You know, being a treasurer in charge of stewardship at a church is in some ways thankless business. It's like doing the dirty work that nobody else wants to do. Um, and um, you do it with grace and love and dignity here. And I know that the, the church here is so appreciative of the work that you do and just the way you do it out of care and love for this community. So thank you so much. I just want to give one shout out. Uh, um, Jonathan is starting his bi Bible study uh, uh, on Monday, tomorrow, Taste and See, and it's going to be in uh, one of the classrooms down that hall at 11 o'clock on uh, Monday morning, and it'll be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be great. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's not at 1 a.m., as it says in the weekend. <laughs> it's at 11 a.m. 
<laughs> so come and, come and taste and see the beauty of the Lord. Um, and we will have another chance to taste and see in a different way on December 2nd, which is a Saturday. Um, we will be having an Advent quiet day, and only a few people have signed up so far, which is distressing to some. Not to me, because I know people forget and don't sign up till the last minute. But you need to sign up by November 29th, which is the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. Sooner would be better, so that we know how, how to plan for the meal that will be offered to you. Um, we will have a labyrinth, which is exciting to me. They are, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful meditative tool. So think about beginning Advent with a quiet walk with Jesus. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we praise you, who, singing this hymn to the glory of your name. <laughs> We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ. Molly, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Molly, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Robert, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Peter, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. You do the first. Okay. Izzy, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. 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 The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. You can turn five talents into five more. 
blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Love you, sweetie. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Amen. Love you, Colleen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that, that we, we are, are living members of the body of, body of your Son and, and heirs, heirs of your eternal, eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have, have given, given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And as a statement of our willingness to be good stewards, let us pray. Almighty, Almighty and ever-living ever God, God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, Hear our prayers for our Holy Cross Parish family. Strengthen the arouse the hopeful, and restore the joyful. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.
forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.